out. Six, stay home. You have to close off all the tournament tables, huh, Josh? No more tournaments? Are you serious? A lot of stores are going to be changing right now or shutting down. The 2020 COVID pandemic hit the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG like an absolute hurricane and left chaos and destruction in its wake. Card shop closures, mass product delays, and the IRL competitive tournament scene basically being canceled for nearly two years. We all know how rough it's been over the last year and a half being a fan of this or really any trading card game. As interesting as the pandemic's widespread negative effects on Yu-Gi-Oh have been over the last 18 months, and I'll cover those in another video, in this one I'm going to be trying to focus on what I believe is the more important topic at hand, the current state of Yu-Gi-Oh, with the new cancellations and all, and the importance of real life events. Full disclosure, I had this video completely finished about a month ago and I was incredibly pleased with the result. But because of unforeseen event cancellations like YCS Pasadena and Utrecht, the overall theme, some of the topics, and the tone of this video have drastically changed. But before we do that, a quick thank you to our sponsor. This video is brought to you by the Fatal Core Trading Card Game. I promoted Fatal Core and its groundbreaking simultaneous gameplay along with its successful launch on Steam in the past, but this time it's really outdone itself. Fatal Core's all new draft mode is truly a thing of beauty. This mode lets you use and design completely new and never before seen cards. It's done through their innovative and intuitive draft system that gives effects and stats in exchange for shards, which players are given a specific amount of. This ensures you can make all types of cool and creative cards, but never an overly powerful deck that someone else can't match. With an absolutely endless amount of variety on how your custom cards can work together, there's no way the meta will get stale, and you'll never know what to expect from your next opponent. For anyone who doesn't want to draft, as always, Fatal Core's constructive mode is just as strong and rewarding as ever. With new features being added regularly, there's never been a better time to start playing the 100% free to play and never any purchase necessary Fatal Core TCG. Download it on Steam today using the link in the description below. For starters, let's talk about real life events, because I think they're the lifeblood of our game. We've all played Yu-Gi-Oh! video games or one of the simulators, but if I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. There simply is no substitute for an in-person event. And let me make this clear, it can be a 1600 person YCS or the 12 person little locals where everyone knows everyone. This doesn't matter if you're brand new to the game, a YCS champion, or even an old season, maybe a little washed up veteran like myself. Things like sitting at the table face to face with your opponent or seeing the long line of potential opposing duelists when you enter the venue, I've been going to regional since 2006 and it still gives me goosebumps to this day. At their peak, these tournaments are thrilling, fun, and incredibly rewarding when you do your best. But for basically a year and a half, we didn't have them. No locals, no regionals, no YCS events, no Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship. If like me, you love seeing old friends at events, traveling to new places, or even the small things like trying to read your opponent's face and mannerisms to see if they're bluffing, there really just wasn't an outlet. I'm not blaming Konami for this, COVID isn't their fault, and to their credit, they even created an entirely brand new way of dueling out of thin air in Yu-Gi-Oh! Remote Duels. At the same time, with something developed so quickly came a whole other smorgasbord of problems. Putting aside the rampant cheating accusations at remote duel events for a second, as NBT alluded to after playing in an event, Man, it is just not the same. Um, so much of Yu-Gi-Oh has to do with Yu-Gi-Oh not at all. It's about um, being with a community, uh, all sort of competing for the same goal. Uh, it's about talking with friends. It's about late nights brewing. It's about... Um, you know, pushing your deck to its absolute limits. And so little of that can be represented online. Um, it just doesn't compare. Remote duels are an incredibly impersonal experience. This is especially noticeable in between rounds when rather than chatting with friends, you're often sitting in a room by yourself. Sure, there have been online dueling book tournaments hosted by the likes of Luxury Games and Dragon Riders, and those are fine, I guess. In my opinion, DB tourneys, while nice, just don't stack up to the real thing. Speaking for myself here, without any premier events to play at, things like buying cards, the metagame, and the competitive tiers just felt pointless and frustrating. Like who cares how strong Adam Emancipators are if I can't play them because there are no real events. 
Why should I spend $100 on a secret rare Eldritch to Golden Lord if it's just going to sit in my binder and collect dust for the same exact reason? For a player like myself who has no aspirations of being a pro duelist and enters events like regionals simply for the thrill of competition, the pandemic was like the epitome of how to unmotivate someone. Well, from a Yu-Gi-Oh sense. Heck, even as a content creator who makes a living off of these videos, I have to admit, at times during the pandemic, I felt incredibly apathetic towards the game. Sure, I could have played on Dueling Book until I could combo with half the meta decks in my sleep, and while it is a valuable resource for improvements, constantly grinding DB is a pretty isolating experience, compared to in-person Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments, which honestly can have a party-like atmosphere if you're with enough friends. And hey, I don't want to project here, but I think a lot of people have become very excited about Yu-Gi-Oh in the last couple of months, and I know personally, my passion has been reignited. The combination of IRL high-end events like YCS and regional qualifiers returning, combined with some pretty amazing set releases such as Burst of Destiny and Gold Series El Dorado, not only did it truly look like Yu-Gi-Oh was finally getting back to normal and we'd once again be able to crown champions, but also we'd get back to having tournaments that basically double as social events with thousands of duelists coming together to compete for the ultimate glory. At the same time, it appeared that all of this was happening when our sets were arguably at the top of their game. This is what I like to call a double whammy of awesome. DPE, Fluundery, Sword Soul, man Burst of Destiny is without a doubt one of the best core booster sets in years, and I'm not sure I could find anyone who hates this set even if I tried. This is why, for me at least, it's so tragic that 2022, which we all know was supposed to be the year of Yu-Gi-Oh's triumphant and big return, has started off in such a soul-crushing way. As mentioned earlier, YCS Pasadena and Utrik were both cancelled and replaced with remote dual YCS events. As you might imagine, this decision was met by a lot of dismay in the Yu-Gi-Oh community as people were not only disappointed, but duelists also felt blindsided. I commend Konami for scrambling together some remote dual YCSs to replace the IRL ones, which at least gives the community some type of dueling action. But at the same time, there is no ignoring that probably like 90% of players prefer the in-person events. Even with vaccination requirements to attend these events, Konami must have felt they were too big of potential public health risks to hold the tournaments. Most planning to attend were understandably upset, especially those who purchased plane tickets or booked hotels in advance. However, on the other side, there's also been a good deal of understanding and support for Konami's decision, even from the likes of some Yugi tubers like YGO Paisano. You know, people can say whatever about me as far as the virus or that kind of stuff. Uh, this is something I'm actually glad Konami did do. In fact, you can look at the cases over here. Like, yeah, good. In, in my opinion, I mean, this should have been done a little bit sooner, but hey, listen, I'm glad it's done. I'm glad this is going on. The two YCS events aside, I think the bigger issue is the possibility of more events being canceled. I'm not trying to paint a bleak picture here for dramatic effect or anything. However, if Konami was willing to can the first two YCSs after a nearly two year hiatus, then that tells me that basically anything is on the table. At the time of me recording this video, there are almost 50 regionals scheduled in the US through April 30th, as well as YCS Las Vegas. How many, if any of those events actually end up taking place is honestly anyone's guess. The pandemic of course is a fluidly moving situation that can get drastically worse or better from week to week. A month ago when I was writing this video, it never even crossed my mind that Pasadena and Utrik wouldn't take place, but then again, here we are. I think one of the reasons the event cancellations are hitting people like myself so hard is because we've actually seen the other side, or the metaphorical light at the end of the tunnel. Throughout December and even into January, regional qualifiers have been taking place all over parts of Europe. Even though I'm not able to attend these events, it's still exciting to see what players can craft together to fight the meta and makes me even more excited and anxious to attend one myself. With that said, Yu-Gi-Oh's current state of one step forward and I guess one step back is made all the more frustrating by it. When it comes to holding tournaments, Konami has consistently erred on the side of caution over the past 18 months. This is commendable, however, it really doesn't give clarity as to what type of parameters they deem safe enough to hold an event in. 
whether that's under a certain amount of cases or maybe cases per capita. We in the community are pretty much in the dark and that's what's most frustrating. In 2020, when the whole world was scrambling for answers, I think it was fine for giant corporations not to have a plan and pretty much be making up policies on the spot. In 2021, most had clear guidelines for their employees and customers. But here it is all the way in 2022, and because of lack of communication, all we can do is guess and hope for the best as to if an event will happen or not. I'm not saying Konami should just cancel all winter and spring events, and I'm not saying that they should have everything as scheduled and simply deal with the PR nightmare if it occurs because a bunch of duelists got sick. I'm beginning to think this is more than just the flu. Perhaps you two are right. It's about time that you admitted something's wrong, but what are we supposed to do now? I'm saying that there needs to be some sort of public guidelines that gives insight to what it takes for an event to take place as scheduled. That way, even if things go awry, we at least have some type of heads up. Right now, everyone in the community seems laser focused on the new February ban list that just dropped. And don't get me wrong, it was incredibly exciting. I mean, I felt like a kid on Christmas when I saw Skill Drain at 3. I could barely breathe. However, we can't miss the forest for the trees here. As awesome and interesting as the new format can be, with all these events getting cancelled, the next month could end up deciding the rest of the spring slate. In addition, the YCS schedule as well as even if national season happens in North America at all. So it's pretty important. And actually, a quick update before we wrap this up. After finishing this video, for a second time I might add, I learned later the next day that YCS Las Vegas as well as all regional events through February have now been cancelled and replaced with remote dual events, so that's just peachy. That whole doomsday scenario that I brought up earlier really wasn't for dramatic effect, and now it might actually happen. I know for me personally, I'll be watching the next month and how it plays out with the pandemic and event cancellations very closely because not only will it let me know if I can attend regionals I plan on going to in my area and if I should continue buying cards for my Eldritch deck, but it'll also give me an answer to a very important question. A question that I've been asking myself, others, and now you, person watching this video. The question is simple, is Yu-Gi-Oh back? People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Going into 2022 and going into writing this video, I thought the answer was a resounding yes. In fact, that was the whole theme of the original video. But now, I think that it's more likely to be determined. I know that we're all going to have our own definitions of what being back means, or maybe for some of you, Yu-Gi-Oh! never left. But in my book, until we have the return of high-end in-person events, Yu-Gi-Oh! just can't officially be back. Well, those are just my thoughts on the current state of the game, the event cancellations, and everything in between. Tell me yours in the comment section below, and of course, thank you very much for watching as always.